This is the Ferrari Puro Sangue. It's the first SUV Ferrari has ever made. Though Ferrari are in denial because they're refusing to admit the car is actually an SUV, even though it has a raised ride height and tallish practical four-door body. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this, the first ever Ferrari SUV, even if they say it isn't that, because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Ferrari has a seriously impressive history when it comes to sports cars. It's been making them for 75 years, so it knows the recipe off by heart, like all good Italian chefs. You start with a big engine, at the front or in the middle. Then you cover it in some gorgeous aluminium or carbon fibre bodywork. But this new Puro Sangue, which means thoroughbred in Italian, changes everything. Even if you ignore the fact it's an SUV, it's still the first ever Ferrari production car to come with four doors. And that's shocking enough. But despite all that, it's not like Ferrari's designers started with the completely blank sheet of paper. The Puro Sangue borrows plenty of design cues from other, more normal Ferraris. The headlights look a bit like stretched versions of the ones on the SP1 Monza. And from the side, the air vent behind the front wheels and the shape of the windows reminds me of the old Ferrari FF. At the back, the new Puro Sangue looks a bit like a Ferrari Roma that's been stretched on a medieval torture rack. All in all, I think the Puro Sangue looks like a jigsaw that someone tried to finish using pieces from a different puzzle. Basically, I'm saying it looks coolish, but also a bit odd. Anyway, what do you think? Do you like the new Ferrari Puro Sangue? Or would you rather have something like a Lamborghini Urus, an Aston Martin DBX or Bentley Bentayga Speed? I'll put a pinned comment down below so you can actually vote on which of those is your favourite SUV. There's at least one thing about the new Puro Sangue that stays true to Ferrari's roots, and that's the engine. Ferrari could have played it safe and given this car the 3.9 litre twin turbo V8 from the Roma, but Ferrari set its sights on outgunning the Bentley Bentayga Speed with its massive 6 litre twin turbo W12 engine. This means the Puro Sangue gets an absolutely monstrous 6.5 litre naturally aspirated V12 that revs all the way to 8,250 RPM. It uses the same cylinder heads as the wild 812 Competizione and cranks out 725 horsepower and 716 newton meters of torque. Okay, so that's some way off the 900 newton meters you get in the turbocharged Bentayga, but no SUV with an internal combustion engine can match the Ferrari for power. It produces 18 horsepower more than you get in an Aston Martin DBX 707 or a Jeep Trackhawk. Thing is, BMW has just confirmed that it will reveal the brand new XM SUV this month. And it's already said that car will get a brand new hybrid system that uses a 4-litre twin-turbo V8 and an electric motor that in total makes 750 horsepower and 1,000 newton meters of torque. That's 25 horsepower and 284 newton meters more than you get in the Ferrari. Oh well, easy come, easy go. But before you write a check to BMW to get yourself on the list for an XM, consider this. The Puro Sangue isn't just the only SUV in the world with a naturally aspirated V12 engine, it's also the only Ferrari you can buy that comes with a V12 of any kind. Yep, everything else Ferrari currently sells comes with a turbocharged V8 or a V6. The V12 812 Competizione is completely sold out, and don't even think about trying to buy an SP3 Daytona. All 599 of those were spoken for before the car was even revealed. In a weird way, this means the Pura Sangue is actually the purest Ferrari on sale. Well, apart from the fact that it's an SUV, not an SUV, actually it's an SUV Ferrari, just accept it, all right? The new Puro Sangue isn't the first Ferrari to come with four-wheel drive, though. Remember the FF from a few years ago? That car used a pair of clutches mounted directly to the engine to send power to the front wheels if the back wheels started to spin. Ferrari has modernised this concept for the Puro Sangue. It sends power from the front of the V12 engine directly to the front wheels through an electronic torque vectoring differential. This isn't the only unusual thing about this car, though. Most high-performance four-wheel drive cars have their gearbox bolted directly to the engine. Then they have an extra set of gears that splits the power between the front and the rear wheels. Ferrari has mounted the Puro Sangue's new 8-speed dual-clutch gearbox at the back between the rear wheels. Fitting this hefty gearbox under the boot helps balance the weight of the heavy V12 engine at the front. This means Ferrari has managed to give the Puro Sangue an almost perfect 49 to 51 weight distribution front to rear. And this should help it handle a bit more like a sports car and not a big heavy SUV, which is actually what it is. Sorry, Ferrari. Nah, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm going to keep going on like this. Speaking of heavy, how much does the new Puro Sangue weigh? Well, Ferrari says it tips the scales at 2,033 kilograms, but this is what's called the 
dry weight. This means it's weighed the car without fluids like petrol and oil, so the actual weight will be quite a bit more than that. It's probably in the same ballpark then as a Lamborghini Urus Performante, an Aston Martin DBX 707 and a Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT, and all those cars weigh around 2.2 tonnes. The Ferrari does come with a carbon fibre roof like the Porsche though, which should help reduce the centre of gravity and improve the car's handling. Huge SUVs don't usually have very interesting aerodynamics, but Ferrari has come up with some clever ways to help the Pura Sangue slip through the air as cleanly as possible. It uses specially designed vents in the edges of the bonnet to help suck hot air out of the engine bay and reduce drag at the same time. The wheel arches also have special undercuts around them to create a curtain of air that reduces drag around the front and rear wheels. The front splitter, smooth underfloor and rear diffuser have all been designed to reduce drag and Ferrari shaped the rear wing to create vortices that reduce drag and help clean dirt off the rear windscreen. As an added bonus, this means the Puro Sangue doesn't need an ugly rear wiper. How do the new Puro Sangue's performance stats compare with other SUVs though? Well, this four-door Ferrari will accelerate from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.3 seconds. That's exactly the same time it takes an Aston Martin DBX 707, a Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT and a new Lamborghini Urus Performante to do 0 to 62. It appears that these cars have all been benchmarked against one another. This is important anyway because all those cars share the number one spot as the quickest accelerating SUV on sale. Although I've timed a few of them and one of them, well, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT of course, was slightly quicker than it was claimed to be. This is how fast that car was. 3.14 seconds! However, acceleration is only half the story. What about top speed? Well, the Ferrari Puro Sangue tops out at more than 192 miles an hour. That's 310 kilometers an hour in case you're wondering. Ferrari has kitted out the Puro Sangue with loads of clever chassis control technology to make sure it drives like a proper Ferrari should. Well, supposedly it should anyway. For starters, it has a version of the 812 Competizione's four-wheel steering. This has been recalibrated to work alongside the torque vector and front differential to make the car more agile in tight bends. There's also a brand new active suspension system that uses a unique type of adaptive damper to reduce body roll in fast corners. But amongst all that supercar tech, the Pura Sangue also comes with hill descent control as standard, even though it's not an SUV at all, is it? The new Puro Sangue's cabin gets a curvy dashboard that's supposedly been inspired by the one in the SF90. You get a digital driver's display like that car and a set of similar triangular air vents. The biggest difference compared to the SF90 though is a brand new 10-inch touchscreen directly in front of the passenger. There's also a small panel with touch-sensitive controls for the heating system in the middle of the car, with a rotary dial that raises up out of the dashboard. The steering wheel gets Ferrari's classic Manatino switch for changing the car's driving mode, and Ferrari has introduced some new interior options for the Puro Sangue, including carbon fibre panels with a special copper weave. There's also a more sustainable version of Ferrari's signature Alcantara trim, and you can get the carpet made from a high-strength material inspired by military uniforms. You can also ditch the standard carbon fibre roof and get a full-length panoramic glass roof instead, if you want to. After all, it's an SUV, so it's more about practicality than handling. One of the coolest things though about the new Puro Sangue are its rear doors. These are hinged backwards, just like the ones on a Rolls-Royce Cullinan, another SUV. But unlike the car, you cannot get a five-seat version of the Puro Sangue. It's strictly a four-seater, so it has just two back seats, which means it can carry no more people than the old GTC4 Lusso. This sounds a bit daft, but it's exactly the same story with the Cayenne Turbo GT, which also only has two back seats, and it's still an SUV. Just like in that car, tall adults might struggle to get comfortable in the back of this Ferrari as well, but that's the price you pay for a swoopy roofline on your SUV. I'm going to stop saying SUV now, I think you've got the point right. Anyhow, it's not all bad news. The Puro Sangue's 473 litre boot is the largest of any production Ferrari, and you can get a special fitted luggage set to make the most of it too. Well, for a price of course. While well, I'm on the subject of price, how much does the new Ferrari Puro Sangue cost? Well, Ferrari hasn't confirmed exactly how much they're going to charge for it yet, but don't be surprised if it ends up costing more than £300,000, which is about £100,000 more than a Bentley Bentayga Speed. And it's twice the price of the £150,000 Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. And most importantly, that's before you've added any optional extras like that lovely luggage. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on your next car. Thanks for watching.